Greetings, this is Ferb from FreedomBookClub.com, coming to you coming to you live from West Valley City, Utah. It is March 1st at 102 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm coming to you to announce this month's Book of the Month, uh, which this month is James Madison. In the Making of America by Kevin Gutzman, Dr. Kevin Gutzman. So, let's take a look at the voting breakdown. I'm gonna wait for my computer to catch up. My broadcasting software says that my computer is running greater than 80% capacity, so you just have to bear with me there. Here, well that's the breakdown of the shares, and I'm trying to get over to the chart. Computer's working very, very hard. Yeah, it's pretty much maxed out, so... Play on, children. trying very hard to show the totals. And I have a cool graph, but it's not working. Let's just say... Oh, there it is. Yay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Goodson's book, James Madison and the Making of America, um, won by a wide margin, garnering 61.5% of the vote total. In second place was uh, Dreams and Nightmares by Harry Felker garnering 13.6% of shares cast followed then by um, Duopoly by Daryl W. Perry how Republicrats control the electoral process is the byline on that and then last place was none of the above 5.2, and then The Politically Incorrect Guide to Capitalism by Robert Murphy, garnering 6.8% of shares cast. Seeds grow after they are cast. Anyway, let me read you a little bit about James Madison and the Making of America. I'm just going to read a couple of reviews. Uh, since the last video I did featured this other text over here. Okay. The serious reader who wants a detailed account of James Madison's long public career drawn from primary sources will find Kevin Goodson's book deeply rewarding. The author's treatment of Virginia's ratification convention and the drafting of the Bill of Rights are particularly valuable. It's from Daniel Walker Howe, Pulitzer Prize winning author of What Hath God Wrought? The Transformation of America, 1815 to 1848. This, this other review is pretty good that I've read. Uh, writing with authority and verve, Kevin Gutzman merges James Madison, the, the practical Virginia politician, and James Madison, the world class political theorist, in this well rounded biography of one of the most remarkable, multifaceted founders of the Republic. John Kukla, author of Mr. Jefferson's Women and A Wilderness So Immense, The Louisiana Purchase and the Destiny of America. So, I know that uh, Dr. Gutzman's book, uh, James Madison and the Making of America, is history book, the History Book Club's main selection for February. Let's see if we can put it over the top and, uh, by going out buying it en masse um, as it is our selection. Go to our affiliate link, which I will publish very, very soon, uh, and purchase it right away, and then read it and write a review. I can't stress how important the reviews are for sales. Um, so go ahead and buy that book. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to reading it, and I'm probably going to get a 
Kindle copy just to tide me over until the um, until the paperback arrives. I didn't get the um, the copy I was had been promised. Had, maybe it got lost in the mail. I have no idea what happened to it, but I look forward to getting it. And okay, so let's go to the other selections. The finalists. Oh snap! Something went wrong with displaying this web page. Let's see if we can reload it. See what I mean? Oh snap! Did not like it. Anyway, we got a few other finalists. I'll just go through, um, and hopefully, my system doesn't totally crash. This is probably the worst video I've ever made, but... Okay, here's a, the first selection, finalist A, is On Liberty by John Stuart Mill. Published in 1859, John Stuart Mill's On Liberty presented one of the most eloquent defenses of individual freedom in 19th century social and political philosophy, and it is, it is today perhaps the most widely read liberal argument in support of the value of liberty. Mill's passionate advocacy of spontaneity, individuality, and diversity, along with his contempt for compulsory uniformity and the despotism of popular opinion, has attracted both admiration and condemnation. That's according to the Goodreads profile for the book. The second book... Yay, got our book back, our website back. Is Anything That's Peaceful... The Case for the Free Market by Leonard E. Reed. And I found this on Mises.org, uh, which has a good intro on the piece. Leonard Reed was a great spokesman for liberty and an excellent teacher in the second half of the 20th century. Everyone agrees that this is his most inspired collection. It includes the essay later called I, Pencil which is a masterful description of the workings of the division of labor. His constant theme was that it takes human cooperation across the globe under conditions of liberty to produce even the most seemingly simple object. We dare not take it for granted. It was Reed's lifetime conviction that we all overestimate the efficiency of the state and underestimate the powerful and productive force of private enterprise. He understood the unpredictably magnificent effects that result from letting people trade, create, and cooperate within the free market order. It is this which forms the basis of civilization. His rule was that society should permit anything that's peaceful. The costs associated with stopping peaceful activity always and everywhere outweighs the benefits. His lesson here might be considered the very core of the old idea of liberalism, namely, that society can manage itself in an ordinary and productive way and needs no outside intervention to improve its shape and direction. Would that this lesson were pervasive in our day, Leonard Reed needs to be reread and his teachings reabsorbed in every generation. And that's from the Mises Institute, the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Oh, snap! We have more trouble. Let's see if we can get this to load. Uh, the next selection is called Humanity's End. Why We Should Reject Radical Enhancement by Nicholas Agar. This book is published by uh, an imprint of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Press. Uh, and I visited their website and will read you their description. Proposals to make us smarter than our greatest geniuses or to add thousands of years to our lifespan seem fit only for the spam folder or trash can and yet this is what contemporary advocates of radical enhancement offer in all seriousness they present a variety of technologies and therapies that will expand our capacities far beyond what is currently possible for human beings in humanity's end nicholas agar argues against radical enhancement, describing its destructive consequences. Agar examines the proposals of four prominent radical enhancers, Ray Kurzweil, 
who argues that technologies will enable our escape from human biology, Aubrey de Grey, who calls for anti-aging therapies that will achieve, quote, longevity escape velocity, end quote. Nick Bostrom, who defends the morality and rational rationality of enhancement and, oh, over time, whatever. And the enhance, this will be better when it's not live. <laughs> Nick Bostrom, who defends the morality and, ration, uh, and rationality of enhancement, and James Hughes, who envisions a harmonious democracy of the enhanced and the unenhanced. Agar argues that the outcomes of radical enhancement could be darker than the rosy futures described by these thinkers. The most dramatic means of enhancing our cognitive powers could, in fact, kill us. The radical extension of our lifespan could eliminate experiences of great value from our lives, and a situation in which some humans are radically enhanced and others are not could lead to tyranny of post humans over humans. Uh, that's the description of Humanity's End Why We Should Reject Radical Enhancement by Nicholas Agar. To Nicholas Agar's credit, I guess he's also written a piece which is pro transhumanism. Uh, which we may consider at a future date. Okay, and the f final finalist, if I can get it to come up here, is by Derek Gunn, the Dublin-based author. The, the book is called Vampire Apocalypse, Descent into Chaos. And I'm waiting for Amazon to come up. And it says here... In the product description, Descent into Chaos is the second book in Derek Gunn's Vampire Apocalypse series. The first battle is over and Nero is dead. Now the human survivors will pull themselves from the ruins of their base to find that the world is a very different place outside Nero's territory. Nationally, the vampires have organized themselves into cabals, but the scramble for power raw materials, and humans for their food have led to an uneasy peace. Below the surface, each state's state plots against the other. Below the surface, each state plots against the other, and only the far-reaching power of the Vampire Council holds all out war at bay. Now their control is slipping, and Peter Harris and his team have a plan that just might push them over the edge. So, go to freedombookclub.com slash vote.html choose the book of the month and don't forget to buy James Madison and the Making of America via our affiliate link and I'll have that posted very very soon thanks very much for joining us it's been great having you and I'll try and make a better video and upload it for posterity at YouTube be seeing you